Good morning. I am Dr. Ishan Goyal, Assistant Professor in Cardiothoracic and Vascular Surgery in UN Mehta. And today I am going to present a seminar on mechanical prosthetic valves. It is basically a theoretical topic, a lengthy one, which has a good and relevant clinical implications as we put mechanical and prosthetic valves day in and day out in surgery. We will be seeing this seminar in the following stanzas. Introduction, the general consideration about the valves and the terminologies which we are going to use further in the seminar. History and the type of valves, valve related morbidity, especially uh, PPM, patient prosthetic mismatch and post-operative antithrombotic therapy and the choice of valves specifically for each and every patient which to use me either mechanical or bioprosthetic and which generation is going on right now. So we will start. After the introduction of the valve replacement surgery in early 1960s, it has improved dram dramatically. The type of valves, the process by which the valve is introduced and the mechanics related to the valve. Also the better understanding of the cardiac cycle and the cardiac mechanics have improved the type of the valve and preservation of it. Despite of the marked improvement in the type of design of the prosthetic valves, we cannot say a patient who has undergone valve replacement is completely cured for the disease. We can just say that the native valve disease is traded for a prosthetic valve disease. He is not completely disease free. Some part of the morbidity is always related to the type of valve which is inserted. Nonetheless, many of the processes related complications can be prevented or their impact can be minimized through optimal processes selection of the individual patients and the proper follow-up and the management of these patients. Uh, ideal prosthetic valve, the definition was given by Dr. Harkin. It com consists of 10 commandments which says that if these are followed then the valve is said to be ideal. Till date there is no valve which has completed all these 10 ideal valve commandments. Firstly, the longevity similar to the native valve. The valve which is inserted in a patient should have the life, uh, life range of the normal life expectancy of the patient. So even if it is inserted early in the teenage or even before that, then that valve should last till the patient lasts. So it should not have a limited lifespan. It should be non-thrombogenic and it, there should be no need for anticoagulation. Uh, ideal valve should not need for any blood thinners or antithrombotic therapy. There should be no inherent gradient across the valves. As we know that the valve is in between the two chambers or the chamber and the great vessels. If there is inherent uh, gradient across the valve then there will be somewhat de decrease in the flow across the valve. Thirdly, it should be easy to implantable and the process of implantation should be repeatable as it is not that only one surgeon or a particular group of surgeon will be using the valves. It will be used all over the world so it should be easily implantable and it should be easily done future. It should be readily available in each and every corner so that it can be used. It should grow with the size of recipient as when the patient is small and we are uh, forced to keep a smaller size valve with increase in the patient's BSA and patient body surface area the size of the valve should also increase so that there must not be any gradient across it. Suppose if the patient increase in the BSA and the valve does not increase which happens in majority of these valves then there presents an inherent gradient across the valves. Thirdly it should be chemically inert it should not react with the various elements and the cells which are present in the blood and fourth and ninth point is it should close promptly opening and closing of the valve should not take time as we know the general uh, cardiac cycle which we study is consists of 0.8 second which is even less than one second in that the valve has to open as well as close so if there is an inherent delay in the opening and the closing of the valve then it can cause problems in the cardiac cycle and it should be implanted at the physiological site. Aortic valve should be implanted in the aortic annulus, mitral valve should be implanted in the mitral annulus. So this should be kept in mind while designing a valve. Until date there is no valve made which fulfills each and every point of this Harkin commandments. The valve substitutes. 
we have basically two type of valve substitute mechanical and biological the mechanical valve substitutes are which we'll be discussing in this seminar the bioprosthetic valve substitutes we'll be discussing later on these these are basically of two types treated and untreated it consists of allograft autograft and xenograft and also the treated which are available as bioprosthetic which are available in the market the components of mechanical valve mainly consists of the housing which is the metal framework in which the valve is itself the leaflets which are the moving parts of the valves the hinge it is the connection between the housing and the leaflets it is the most crucial part for the valve as the hinge is the most common site for struck of the valves the struts the components of mechanical valves there are basically five components of mechanical valve firstly it is the housing it is the main frame in which the valve resides second is the leaflet it is the moving portion of the valves third is the hinge hinge is the connection between the metallic frame and the leaflets the struts struts are the hinges of the valves which are protruding from the housing and it helps in anchoring the leaflets of the valves and lastly the sewing ring sewing ring is the area where we take the sutures and it is useful in approximating the valve with the native tissue the components of bioprosthetic valve are somewhat different as the valve cusp and the metal framework is different in orientation as compared to the bioprosthetic valve the struts are also basically made of the metal framework with bioprosthetic valves the coverage and the sewing rings the common terminologies which we are going to use here is iod that is internal orifice diameter it is the diameter in inside the housing in this figure we can see the internal diameter in mechanical valve it consists of the housing diameter from the inner side of housing to the other side of the housing from here to here the other one is the tissue annulus diameter it is the labeling of the valve if we see that uh, for example 19 mm 28 mm 27 mm valve it is exactly the valve which is measured from the outer side of the housing the diameter from here to here and in bioprosthetic valve also it consists of from here to here the outer side of the annulus the internal diameter is the inner side of the annulus it not consists of the housing the outer diameter is the or the tissue annulus diameter is the outer side of the and the third is the external diameter it is the valve in total along with the sewing ring it is the external diameter so external diameter is the longest diameter after then comes the tissue annulus diameter and after then comes the internal diameter the other three the other three definitions which we are going to see is geometric orifice area internal orifice area and effective orifice area the geometric orifice area or goa firstly the biggest among them is internal orifice area it consists of all the areas which are inside the uh, internal diameter it does not consist of the leaflets so it is the total area which is inside the diameter after that comes the geometric orifice area geometric orifice area is excluding the area consists of leaflets and after then comes the effective orifice area effective orifice area is the most important one which determines the effective area from which the blood flows it excludes the area of stresses ar around the leaflets as well as the tissue now the implantation techniques there are different implantation techniques intraannular intrasupraannular and supraannular which we'll see later on in the general principles of prosthetic valves we have to see the following things firstly the date of expiry of the prosthetic valve it is the date which indicates how long it can be preserved the thermal indication or in the especially in the tissue valve because they are stored at uh, by eto in a proper container if the thermal indicator goes off then we need to return the valve to the company and the serial number which is written inside as well as outside the box we should know before implantation whether what is the exact anatomy of the valve and how we going to preserve it and how we going to suture the valve either the valve is rotatable or not or any other things which are to be known the movement of the leaflets the orientation of the valves everything should be known beforehand before implanting the particular valve now the materials used in uh, 
in mechanical heart valves. Proper utilization of suitable materials which are biocompatible is needed and the material should be inert as per the Hikens criteria. So the requirements of the materials are it should cause minimal trauma to the blood elements. It should have the good resistance to mechanical and structural wear and tear. It should not be a biodegradable material. It should have good sterilization properties and it should neither absorb or release foreign materials in the blood or absorb the blood components in itself. It should not change in the shape and size after fixing of the valves. So basically there are different material used for the casing, cage, cage or the housing, for the sewing ring as well as for the movement, moving parts that is the occluder or the leaflets or the disc. The various materials are enumerated here. Those are basically alloys which are made as a combination of metallic and non-metallic materials which we will see later on in each type of the valves. So in history of mechanical valve, first valve operation was done by Tuffier in 1940 and many other things are also done by Tuffier like he is the one to introduce the balloon filled ET which we use regularly. He is also worked with Dr. Alexis Carroll in his initial days for the vascular anastomosis. In 1952, just one year before the CPB was established and ASD was closed by the use of CPB, Dr. Charles Huffnagel put the first caged valve, that is the first known transplanted, uh, known implanted uh, mechanical valve. We can see here, it is a glass valve which was put in DTA. It, there was no cardiopulmonary bypass so it was put in DTA with a short cross clamp time and specifically filled rubber bands for it. In early days of mechanical valve the mortality was very high as high as 15 to 20 percent but today with the refinement of CPB and the newer generation of valves it has decreased to less than two types, less than two percentage. Of 21 different types of valves there are only 6 to 7 which are used universally nowadays, which we will see later on. There are basically 4 categories of mechanical heart valves. Firstly is ball and cage valve, second is non-tilting disc valve, thirdly is tilting disc valve and fourth, fourth is bileaflet valve. The first one in the ball and cage valve is the Huffnagel valve which was the first valve to be implanted as we have seen before. It was implanted in 1952 by Dr. Charles Huffnagel. The chamber as well as the ball was made of methacrylate sodium. So it was a solid uh, plexiglass metal, uh, plexiglass material and the ball was made of it with there was indigenous fixation rings for the aorta. So it needed very short clamp time in the aorta and it can be inserted. It was firstly inserted in the DTA, not in the ascending aorta which we do routinely. It made a lot of noise, the glass ball hitting with the glass frame, hence the ball was replaced with a nylon ball and it was used somewhat around uh, 200 to 300 in use for around 200 to 300 patients and then it was discarded because of increase in the morbidities associated with this and the newer generation of valve which came up soon after it. It is a non-anatomical positioning valve and it is useful in AR as it decreases the return but in AS it is of no use because the stenosis remain as it is. The second valve is Harkin and Sorov ball valve. It was first introduced in 1955 after which the first seven patients were done till 1960 out of which there were only two survivors and both had to undergo re-operation because of some of the other reasons of either bacterial endocarditis or because of the uh, valve degeneration of the silicon ball. The most successful one is the Star Edwards ball valve which is it was commercially available till today and it is one of the most successful brand of the ball and cage valve. The evolution of Star Edward ball valve was done firstly there was a change in the metal frame structure of the valve from uh, 1000 to 1200. There were four struts instead of them only three struts were there in uh, 1200. After that it, uh, there was more noise and more degeneration of the ball hence it was replaced with a metallic ball and the uh, struts were replaced eventually with uh, 
was covered eventually with a Teflon fabric, so there was less noise in the valve. It is not superior to the bileaflet valve which we used as of now, but it is equally useful. The recent valve which is there is a Star Edwards 1620 valve which is introduced in 1966. More than 2.5 lakh Star Edwards valve has been implanted and apart from the uh, silicon polymer uh, interrupting the ball movement there was no structure deterioration seen in the recent generation of Star Edwards valve. The other valve is mangrove and chromy ball valve. The specific feature of this valve is it doesn't need the suturing instead of that there are rotating implantation tool which are there in the inherit in the valve itself which hooks itself in the aorta and this pre prevents the movement and the fixation of the valve this valve was firstly introduced in 1960 where there was it was advertised as a rapid replacement valve as at that time even the CPB was not that well established so the cross clamp time had to be minimal and this valve pro proved to be of great importance in that time. But there are uh, chances that these valve get explanted and migrates distally. The other valve is smell of cutler valve. In this there are two side cages in the ball valve. Usually the ball valve which we see here cage is only present on the one side but it's smell of cutler valve, the case is present on both the side, thus achieving the full flow and permitting the silicon elastomer to set in the inflow case valve as well. The other valve is Diveki surgery tool valve. It is not used nowadays, but this valve is the pioneer of the material which is used in all the valves nowadays, that is pylorate. So it is a polyethylene propet was replaced with hollow pyrotic carbon propet. This was first used in a new carbon material by Dr. Jack Bokros. Hence it is also called a Bokros material. This valve had limited wall variance at it was completely inert. It does not increase or decrease in size and shape. It does not break into small pieces. Hence this material which is used in this valve is used in all the materials right now that is pylorate carbon. Now the other type is non tilting this valve. It was seen that in the ball and cage valve there are chances of the more movement of the ball and hence there was not proper approximation in the valves and hence there was a leak amongst the valves and it occupies more space so the profile of the valve was quite big. To overcome that came the non tilting this valve. The first among them is K Shelley valve. As we can see here it is the ball is replaced by a disc and there are two uh, struts which act as a cage, cage amongst which the uh, disc moves anterior and posterior as per the cardiac cycle. It is a flat silicon elastomer disc. The other one is Beal surgery tool valve. In this also the initial annular apron was covered with velar fabric and the teflon disc instead of a silicon disc was there which was eventually substituted by pyrolate disc, which is the one used in Bokros material. The other one is Cooley Cutler Bionic Disc Valve. Here this is biconical valve. So there are as we can see here, there is a cone present here, uh, on the upper side as well as the inferior part of the disc. Hence it pro provides proper approximation with least disc movement and least disc variation. Tilting disc valve. Bjork Shelley fat disc valve is the first type of disc tilting disc valve in which there are two orifices, smaller orifice and a larger orifice. The smaller orifice is at the level of struts and the larger orifice is at the level where the uh, opening of the valve is present. In Bjork Shelley valve, the Delrin disc was present initially, which was eventually replaced by pyrolate disc. Bjork Shelley concave convex disc tilting disc valve. It is based on the similar concept as the previous valve, only the disc here is hollow with a concave convex shape for easy movement across the struts. But here 
it is a convex or concave and it is seen that it improves the opening angle of these valves. The other one is Lillehei Craster Tilting Disc Valve. It is also of the same mechanism as the previous valve, only the size of and the size and the design of the struts are different. Omni Science and Omni, Omni Carbon Valve. The other one is the Metronic Hall Tilting Disc or Hall Caster Tilting Disc Valve. It is said that it has the highest opening angle amongst the various tilting disc valve. It owes it to the opening in the center of the disc among around which the movement of the disc happens. And there is no fear of uh, margin, uh, migration of the disc eventually because of this opening of the disc and hole in it. The TTK Chitraval, it is said to be a proud moment of India when the first type of mechanical valve was introduced by uh, guys at the Sri Chitra and along with the TTK foundation. It, the concept and the initial valve was introduced by Dr. M. S. Viliathan. And currently what we are using is the fourth generation valves. It is a frame which, which is made by a single block of Heinz 25. It is a aerospace material. It was achieved, it was attained by the close combination with ISRO guys and from there we got a whole block and it was carved from a single block. Hence there is no welding or no uh, mixing of the material in it. Then the occluder which was initially of a high molecular weight polythene which is used also from in the aerospace engineering and the swing ring is made from polyester fabric. This TTK Chitraval is said to be having the opening angle of 70, 70 degree and the disc is plano, con, plano convex in shape and it can last lifelong. Till date TTK Chitraval is widely used in India and because of the limitations in the marketing of this valve, it has not crossed the national borders and proved its valor internationally. But it is a very helpful valve. It is cheaper valve as compared to the international valves. It is very useful in a place like India where there are a plethora of patients with rheumatic heart disease and need for the valve replacement. Now the current generation of a valve which is bileaflet valves. The first introduced by leaflet valve was introduced by Dr. Kalke and Dr. Lilia in coherence. It was implanted on 20th May 1960 in a patient of advanced rheumatic mitral disease. Postoperatively, initially the patient was good, but eventually the patient died. But the leaflet, the valve proved its valor, and the movement of the leaflets, the hinges, the angulation, each and everything proved that this valve has more prospects to cover. The other valve which we used on routine basis is St. Jude Medical by leaflet valve. There are various, these are the two leaflets. The opening angle is 85, closing angle is 30. Hence, we have a tilt and disc yield of 55. This decreases the gradient across the valves in normal standards. There are various series like St. Jude, SJM, Master SJM, Regent and SJM, HP. The HP that is hemodynamic plus and the Regent were introduced especially for aortic valve where the area of the swing ring was decreased and thus the effective orifice area and the area of the valve itself increases and it is easier to insert especially in the heart with small aorta and small annular size of the aorta. The other valves introduced by the Sorin Medical Group is Carbomedics. There are various Grew a series of the valves like Carbomedics R, Carbomedics Trop Hat, and Carbomedics Oris, depending upon the specific orientation of these valves. Carbomedics R is has significantly decrease of the area of the swing ring, hence the valve area is increased and it is used just like SM Regent series or HP series. The other one is Trop Hat. When the annular annulus of the aortic valve is small, we need to introduce the valve in such a way that it rest above the annulus hence it is in supraannular position hence it can the top head is specifically made for that another one is uh, carbometrics oris or carbometric universal it can be used in aortic as well as mitral position and it is such a dynamic and versatile valve that it can be used in annular supraannular and also in subannular position depending upon the requirement of the patient 
द अदर वाल इज बाय ऑनेक्स एंड ए टी एस द ऑनेक्स वाल द स्पेसिफिक पार्ट ऑफ द ऑनेक्स वाल इज दैट दे क्लेम टू हैव अ नाइन्टी डिग्री ओपनिंग एंगल एज यू कैन सी एट द टाइम ऑफ ओपनिंग इट इज ऑलमोस्ट द टू लीफलेट्स आर पैरल एंड दस decreasing the increasing the effective orifice area and it has the best hemodynamic coherence so opening angle leaf and closing opening and the closing leaflet angle of various valve can be seen here the details of each and e, each valve and the pros and cons can be seen here you can read it for further now the valve related morbidity the various types of valve related morbidity includes the structural valve deterioration non structural dysfunction valve thrombosis embolism bleeding event anti thrombotic management proper valve related endocarditis the native valve the prosthetic valve which have implanted the endocarditis related to that and the reintervention because of the valve thrombosis and other events now firstly the structural valve deterioration it includes any dysfunction or deterioration that involves the operated valve it is exclusive of infection of thrombolysis or thrombolysis changes in the intrinsic changes intrinsic to the valve such as wear and tear fracture puppet escape or calcification or leaflet disruption stent creep or suture line disruption which is related to the prosthetic valve itself is called structural valve deterioration it also refers to any new caudal rupture or leaflet disruption or leaflet retraction in case of a repaired valve because it is also related to the repair techniques which we do now the non structural dysfunction it is abnormality not related to the valve but the accessory factors related to that it mainly includes the formation of panus or tissue or suture which hinders in the movement of the valve paravalvular leak inappropriate sizing and setting of the valve the residual leak which is there in and the valve the valve implantation or repair clinically important intravascular hemolytic anemia because of the leak or the paravalvular leak and repair of the valve is also comes under non structural deterioration the onset of new onset of coronary ischemia in post operative because of the valve implantation techniques or the cor uh, coronary sinus impingement of coronary sinus or the lcx sutures through lcx is also present under non structural deterioration more than mild or recurrent or residual regurgitation after valve implantation or surgical or percutaneous valve implantation or repair techniques is also considered in this segment now the valve thrombosis valve thrombosis is any thrombus that is not caused any infect because of any infection but is attached at near the operative valve that occludes the part of blood flow in its path the valve thrombus may be found on autopsy or on echo finding when the patient is having symptoms related to the thrombosis of the valve mainly the stenosis of the valves so the algorithm for left side valve thrombosis there is prosthetic valve thrombosis on the left heart that is mitral or aortic it comes under basically two categories obstructive and non obstructive obstructive are the patients in which the patient is having symptoms and there is gradient more than which is considered as mild stenosis in the mitral and the aortic valve if there is a prosthetic valve thrombosis then there is very high chance that patient under needs to undergo a surgical process if a rescue thrombolysis is done very high surgical risk then the patient cannot undergo surgery then the rescue thrombolysis is done if rescue thrombolysis is good enough and the thrombosis is resolved and the leaflet of valves are resumed as per normal then the patient does not under undergo anything else and the routine anti thrombotic therapy is started but if instead of the rescue thrombolysis despite of rescue thrombolysis the leaflets are not moving then the thrombo uh, surgery sh should be done for the patient and the panus removal or the thrombus removal along with the replacement of the valve as and when needed is to be done now the other side in the obstructive uh, prosthetic heart valves prosthetic valve replacement firstly if the patient is not having any symptoms and there is uh, prosthetic non obstructive prosthetic valve thrombosis then initially he should undergo a short course of heparin for one month and see if there is any decrease in the size of the thrombosis or the patient is still asymptomatic then it is considered as a success but if the thrombus size is as it is then it's need to be operated if the size is more than 5 
and if there is a small thrombosis not hindering the path of the blood in heart and the patient is asymptomatic then routine thrombolysis is start and is continued and the patient is asked for routine follow now the embolism any embolic event then occurs in absence of infection after the immediate post operative period is called embolism it is mainly related to the previous prostatic valve thrombosis which we have seen the basically there are two types of embolic events the neurologic and non cerebral embolic event the neurologic embolic event relates to the uh, part of the thrombus which is dis dislodged and embolized embolized into the any part of the uh, the main carotid arteries that is the internal carotid arteries it can lead to the psychomotor deficits or grave things like stroke also now amongst the non -cere non cerebral embolic event either uh, it can lead to the embolization in the heart it can lead to myocardial infarction if the small embolus traverses and goes in the coronary ostia or it can lead to the blackening and the ischemia of the uh, terminal vessels of upper limbs or lower limbs now the bleeding event the patient on uh, mechanical heart valves are on high dose of antithrombotic therapy at times if it is not titrated accordingly then the blood thinners act in such a way that it can lead to the high INR, high PT and high clotting time which leads to the bleeding event. Any episode of major external or internal bleeding that causes death, hospitalization or permanent injury or it is necessary in transfusion is called a bleeding event because of prosthetic heart valves. Now the operator valve related endocarditis. Any infection involving the valve which is to be for which the operation is to be performed or it is needed, it is called operated valve related endocarditis. The criteria basically are reoperation with evidence of abscess, paravalvular leak, pus or vegetation confirmed as secondary to infection by histologic or bacteriologic studies or autopsy findings of abscess or pus or vegetation involving repaired or replaced valve or in absence of reoperation or autopsy if the patient is meeting the Duke's criteria for endocarditis then the patient is said to be having operated valve endocarditis. Positive blood cultures is always not necessary to stamp the diagnosis as operated valve endocarditis. The morbidities which are related to the, the active infection is for thrombolysis, thrombotic embolus of the endocarditis and bleeding event a parallel leak because of abscess or even the embolic phenomena because of the endocarditis uh, vegetation itself. The re-intervention which is needed because of any of the previously mentioned uh, problems can lead to it can increase the comorbidities of the patient and the eventual morbidity and lead to mortality if not done right. Re-intervention in any surgery or percutaneous interventional catheter procedure that repairs otherwise alters or adjusts or replaces the previously implanted prosthesis or repaired valve. In addition to surgical re-operations, the balloon dilatation, intervention manipulation, repositioning, retrieval and other catheter based procedure are also valve related complications which are considered under the heading of re-intervention. The valve related mortality initially as we saw it was around 15 to 20 percent but because of increase in the uh, valve implantation techniques, the newer CPB techniques and more understanding of the cardiac physiology it has decreased to less than 2 percent. Valve related mortality is said to be any that caused by the structural valve deterioration, non-structural dysfunction, valve thrombosis, embolism, bleeding event or operated valve endo endocarditis that related to the related to the interventional re-intervention or operated valve or sudden or unexplained death in post-op patient or implanted mechanical or bioprosthetic valve is said to be the valve related mortality. Death caused by heart failure primarily because of the myocardial ischemia and disease is not considered amongst the valve related mortality. Now the permanent valve related impairment, it relates to the any impairment neurologic or functional deficit because of which is caused by the previously mentioned or any surgical procedure related to the uh, previously mentioned things like valve deterioration, non-structural deterioration, valve thrombosis, embolism, bleeding event or operated valve to operated valve endocarditis or re-intervention. The major valve related event which are to be considered in any uh, paper, uh, publication which we are writing relates, relates to mainly three things valve related mortality, 
ऑल वर्ल्ड रिलेटेड मॉर्बिडिटी और नीड ऑफ अ परमानेंट पेस मेकर और आई सी डी दैट इज इम्प्लांटेबल कार्डियोटर डिफ्रिब्रिलेटर विद इन फोर्टीन डेज ऑफ आर इंटरवेंशन सो दीज आर द थिंग्स विच आर टू बी मॉनिटर इन अ पेशेंट हु कम्स फॉर फॉलोअप इन द आफ्टर मैकेनिकल वार रिप्लेसमेंट सो एट फर्स्ट पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव आउट पेशेंट डिपार्टमेंट दैट इज ओ पी डी विजिट इट शुड बी एट लीस्ट फिफ्टीन टू थर्टी डेज अपार्ट दैट इज टू टू फोर वीक्स इन द फर्स्ट फॉलोअप द पेशेंट शुड गिव अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ द पेन और द अदर सिम्टम्स विच एज पोजेस रिसेंटली along with that we should do appropriate blood test that is the complete blood count serum creatinine electrolyte level inr in the subsequent follow up visit no need for the complete examination or the complete panel of the blood test instead just the inr and the electrolytes related for which the blood or for which the medications are given should be checked upon class 2b recommendation is there in weight of evidence or opinion is less well established for usefulness of following test in prosthetic heart valves in patient with bioprosthetic valve there is no use of routine echography or the inr or cbc or blood routine blood reports in the initial 5 years because the chances of valve deterioration in the initial 5 years for bioprosthetic valve is very less there is evidence or general agreement that following test should not be done for the patient with bioprosthetic valve that is routine annual echocardiography in patient mechanical valve for the first year or initially first 5 years for the bioprosthetic valve is not needed because of the uh, there is, we have not seen any routine deterioration of the patient in the initially 5 year in bioprosthetic valve or one year in the mechanical valve now the other topic is patient prosthetic mismatch that is ppm ppm is said when the effective orifice area of the inserted prosthetic valve is too small in relation to ship to the patient body size body size is measured in the terms of bsa body surface area the minimum ratio which is required for a normal valve to flow ratio of effective orifice area by the bsa should be less than 0.85 b ppm is basically a term coined for aortic valve as it is the smallest valve in on the left side as the mitral valve causing ppm the rate are very less so it can be uh, it is not considered given that much importance in 1978 rahim tulla first coined the term patient prosthetic mismatch so that the mismatch can be considered to be present when effective prosthetic valve area after insertion into a patient is less than that of a normal human valve following is the chart for the ppm related to the aortic valve and mitral valve my ppm it, it is said or insignificant it is said when the ppm uh, when the area of aortic valve that is effective orifice area is more than 0.85 cm per meter square if it is less than 0.65 then it is said to be a critical prosthetic mismatch and in mitral consideration we can see if it is less than 0.9 cm per meter square then it is said to be of critical stenosis or critical prosthetic mismatch now the impact of ppm on the clinical outcomes of the patient the lv mass regression that is if the patient is operated for say let's say aortic stenosis or aortic regurgitation after the replacement of the valves there is reverse remodeling of the lv wall which because of the uh, reversal of the problems of the valve the also the musculature lv reverts to its normal size and shape this reversal that is called the mass regression of the lv is delayed because of the patient prosthetic mismatch because the distal problem is not gone in total instead of that there it has decreased the uh, size of stenosis is decreased size of regurgitation is decreased but still the regression what is expected in the patient of l of post operative patient of aortic valve will not be seen in a patient having patient prosthetic mismatch also the regression of lv hypertrophy will be delayed or even be suboptimal now it is said that it is not always seen that in patient of ppm the regression will be abnormal there are many such patient despite of the significant patient prosthetic mismatch there is no uh, hemodynamically significant changes and optimal results are achieved in such patients for the prevention of mismatch basically few things which you have to keep in mind firstly calculate the bsa from its height and weight and second we should know the bsa of the valves and we should have the chart of the valve and effective orifice area of the valve which we are inserting 
if you multiply bsa into 0.85 this is the minimum or if effective orifice area which should be present in the valve which are going to implant in these patients now the terminologies uh, dif distinction between the terminologies of thrombus and panus thrombus is a large mobile less ecogenic structure and it is more, uh, most likely associated with uh, spontaneous contrast on echo while panus is small formally strict uh, formally fixed structure which is basically uh, present at the annulus of the valve rather than the valve leaflet itself or the hinge there are if there is a presence of paravalvular jet or the leak present then it is more likely because of panus rather than a thrombus the other difference is it is highly echogenic structure which is which can differentiate it from the echo from in echo by from the thrombus now the choice of valve the following algorithm is used for the uh, improvement and the choice of valve which is to be kept in the what valve is to be kept in which patient firstly we have to see the age life expectancy and the preference of the patient indication and contraindication of warfarin therapy if present any then it should be given first importance firstly the patient desire the desire of patient is of utmost importance if the patient is asked that it should he sh that i want a mechanical valve then it he should be said about he should be explained in the pros and cons of the uh, mechanical valves and also the pros and cons of the bioprocessor valve hence after that he can give a informed consent of which valve he is going to put the pros and cons difference uh, differentiates in each and every patient depending upon the age the life expectancy and also any comorbidities present or not if the patient age is more than 65 and or is having a limited life expectancy the warfarin therapy is not readily available or the it is contraindicated in a specific patient or if the patient is a, a woman of a child bearing age then this goes in favor of bioprosthetic valve on the other side if there is no any contraindication to warfarin therapy patient is already on a warfarin therapy because of some other reasons or a hypercoagulable state and the age of, or the age of patient is less than 65 or the patient is having a long life expectancy then it goes in favor of a mechanical prosthetic valve hence the patient should be informed about the pros and cons and what is preferable for this specific kind group of patients and hence he can made a inform make a informed consent about the type of valve to be introduced now the antithrombotic therapy which is used according to the recent guide guidelines if the mechanical prosthesis prosthesis is kept then the inr is to be empirically the inr is to be kept between 2.5 to 3.5 in aortic valve as well as the mitral valve in aortic valve in the valve which having which is having a low thrombogenicity those are the recent mechanical valve which we use that uh, that is the onyx valve the sjm valve they, these come under the low thrombogenicity hence inr of 2 to 3 is acceptable in these groups especially when the valve is put in the aortic position but when the same valve are put in the mitral position then the warfarin should be in the range of 2.5 to 3.5 irrespective of the inr present inr of the patient the patient should be having a lifelong therapy of aspirin 75 to 100 mg od daily throughout life along with the warfarin hence for empirical purposes we can say that a patient having aortic valve mechanical aortic valve should have inr 2 between 2 to 3 and the patient having mitral valve should have inr from 2.5 to 3.5 with both the type of patient either aortic or mitral should have the uh, lifelong aspirin supplementation 75 200 mg od throughout his life so that's all for this brief lecture of the mechanical prosthetic valve next lecture will be on bioprosthetic valve which we will see and the compare bet comparison between the two can be seen later on thank you